Hey guys, and how's it going? Hey, last summer a subscriber sent me an email about some machines that he had, and this was one of them. It was a home light generator that he had packed away in a shed outside and put it away with marble in the tank and marble in the carburetor. Of course, ran all the fuel out of it. And I was curious to see how it would come back for sitting after, you know, 20 years going through, you know, we're in New England, so you can get down to 10, 20 below and, you know, 120 above in a shed over 20 years just sitting there. And it came back pretty decent. I think it still had fuel issues and I think like motor mount rotted out and there was a couple of other things, but it did come back fairly well. Anyway, it came with something else, which is this. It's a home light generator, same scenario, same 20 years in the shed, same marble in the tank and marble in the carburetor. But I wonder if we will have any issues with the pump being cycled through that weather for so long. I mean, they're both decent units. They're not cheap stuff. And hopefully they do come back. But that's what this video is going to be about. So we're either going to try to revive it and get it working. Or we're going to go find out what happened to it and possibly fix it. Without further ado, let's go get her over on the lift table and uh, let the games begin. I think I better look at what we got. I have really done nothing with it other than park it in the corner after grabbing it. So that would be the hose for it. I believe it had a bunch of manuals. Talk about being organized, huh? We rackers are on the floor. They're waiting their turn. But for this one, I think we'll pick away the pressure washer. We're gonna try doing it without using that. Yeah, let's do a quick walk around. It looks like oil's been leaking out of the, the pump. I don't see anything in there, do you? Like the pump is low on oil. It's got a tag on it. I haven't even tried pulling the pull start yet. Yeah, it's got low oil shut off, which is nice. It saves itself before it blows up. A lot of generators fail that way. People think they've crapped out, they lose spark. Meanwhile, the sensor for the low oil, that has low oil and it doesn't take much. It'll shut off or the sensor itself will fail. Yeah, it not too bad. It's probably the pickup for uh, fluids that you want to go pump into it, like a soap. Let's go Ted, uh, get ourselves a little flashlight. We'll look in the tank. Cap's busted. Yeah, some crud and rust on that. Let's go take a peek inside what it looks like. All right, let's go in there. Well, I can see remnants of the oil. Looks like it's all evaporated out of there. Tank looks better than the other one. The other one, I remember having a bunch of crud. There's a little bit of crap down around the pickup over there. A little white chip. I don't know if it's like chips of paint from the gas cap. Let's go check the oil on it. In our area, a lot of pressure washers, you find at like yard sales and free piles on the side of the road, what happens is, you know, we have winters and they freeze and people don't get the, people don't get the water out of them and it cracks them. Looks decent. So we need full. I think that'll be okay too. Let's go pop that air cleaner off right in front of us. Yeah, so they, they freeze and People go to using the next year and water's just coming out of everywhere. <laughs> All right, what have we got for getting that off of there? And if this is a foam one, they have a tendency to corrode. They get like mushy. You'll stick your finger in them and they just go to like the putty. Yeah, this one's got that, <laughs> that same issue. They just kind of disintegrate on that outer part. So we're going to get rid of that all together. That's just going to turn to dust when we go fire it up. We can blow that off. Actually, there we go. Just pop that out of there. Get you to look up a little. I want to see if things are functioning. Throttle moves. It's weird that it has a, like a high and a low level for pressure. Choke works. You would think a pressure washer would just kind of come on they run at one RPM. I don't know if that you can control the, the volume or the pressure by the throttle. Go grab that pull start, 
See if she turns over. Look at the tag being Japan. Got a bit of drag to it. Be expected. I wonder if we can decouple. You're supposed to run a pump with water all the time. I wonder if there's like an Allen wrench or a coupler that we can get to. I see a coupler right in there. That we can just disconnect the pump for now and we'll kind of work on the engine. Then we'll introduce the pump later so we don't cause any damage. You're supposed to run them with water, but again, I don't want to do that over here. Uh, let's go. They're a little light again. Oh, I think it's going to be some way to have that come apart, right? Worst case, might even be able to just unbolt that. Yeah, it's got the Lovejoy coupler in there. I'm going to go take a peek, see if I can find any set screws. I'm going to rotate that around. We'll loosen them up and we'll try to slide that coupler back. If not, maybe we'll just take those two bolts off. What we got four over here. We'll pull this away. Yeah, I see one right there. Let's get an Allen wrench in there, see if that'll crack loose. I don't want to break the ball off the end of the Allen wrench. Yeah, she's not going. Those couplers just kind of spline themselves together. They're not connected other than, I don't know what you want to call it, friction on the sides. They're notched into each other. So I'm going to go with unbolting it and trying to pull it away a little bit. plated metal underneath it because it's nothing supporting the other end but see how it has a slip joint in there probably the easiest way to do that we do with the pump by itself all right let's go explore the engine i think that's gonna be a little bouncy for us to screw with let's see if yeah that's a little better let's throw some vice grips on that clamp it down let me go pop that plug out of it i think Try to get rid of the drag of the compression. We'll see. Just is there any, any issues with the engine? It's the gas gauge on that thing making wiggly noises. It goes running a little lean. Let's go chug it over a few times, see how it feels. Ah. A little chalky. Dribble some oil down the plug hole, lubricate those rings. It'd been nice to take a scope and look down inside there and see if there was any kind of rust. Just curious what happens over the course of time, you know? There you go. Just kind of swish around. Yeah, there it goes. Now it coasts. What do you think we go put the plug in it, see if we got spark? The kill switch on it is just like a momentary, a button you gotta hold down for it to shut off. And hopefully this part of it works. Everything else is. See if I can get you. There we go. <laughs> Good. Good. Let's go dribble a little bit of fuel in it. And we'll see if she takes off. I had another pressure washer, like a, a more of a commercial one, decent one, that I picked up at a like a warehouse or a factory clearance sale or going out of business sale. And of course, it sat for a while and I got it working, but it seemed like if you tried running it for, let's say, after five minutes, all of a sudden it would lose its capacity. And like that, the pressure would go down. You'd, you'd hear it, you'd, and then you let off the trigger, and you pull the trigger again. And it would come right back. It was kind of confusing me, like what was going on. So they got like a regulator on them. You can adjust the pressure on them. And I ended up bringing it to my house to do some work over there. And lo and behold, it was fine. And what, so what it came down to be is the supply here, and how much pressure is coming out of the hose, wasn't enough to keep up with the volume it was trying to use. 
All right. There we go, a choke open. Let's go back you up a little bit. See if she ticks off. I'm gonna give it three pulls. What's your guess? guess. One. <laughs> three. All right, 10. <laughs> Sounded good. I think it probably used up the gas. Yeah. Alright, good. So we know the mechanicals are going to work. Let's go see about getting that bowl off the carb. We end up pulling the whole thing. Let's get the bowl off the carb and see what the inside of that looks like. Get those three out of the way. You got there. I got that other one running. I was like, what a piece of crap this is. I got ripped off. <laughs> nope. I'm just fine. I do know, like, even when you try using a garden hose here, I think the run is just so far from where the supply is, and it's just a half inch uh, copper tube that feeds it. But it's like 100 feet of run that's on it. Come on. Is that not 10 millimeter? Oh, it's got a little lock and tab. You tell me. Because they figured if it came loose, they didn't want to get sucked into the engine. It's funny, it's got lock washers and a locking tab. They were taking no chances. So my guess is the, the bowl should be filled with oil. Oh, it was filled with oil. Again, whether that evaporated or not, too. What we got? Come on. Let's get the screwdriver to get that choke off of there. There we go. And I think we get the bowl off from here. What do we need? Uh, 13, it looks like. 12 or 13. I remember going to like the car wash. And that'd be like the only pressure washer I ever used. And they're okay. You know, the one where you pay that you put the quarters in, that kind of thing. And the first time I got to use an actual real pressure washer, <laughs> I was like, there's a bit of a difference. Oh yeah. Your thoughts, you think that saved it? I would think so. It looks like it he filled it right to the top too. There run for a sec. check and see what we got for sludge in the bottom. Looks pretty good. There's, there's something there though. There's some kind of crap around the center of that. I think uh, I think it's warm out in there's Harleys. Let's get, we got just one linkage right here. Yeah, let's go get that off of there. We'll get the fuel line off of it. That clamp's not even doing anything. So the spring is nothing fancy. You only got one set of holes to go in. But can we get that to come out of there? There we go. Let's go take a peek on the bench real quick underneath and see if we got any crap inside the Don't want to stretch that seal out. Let's get the float off. Try to. Yeah. How about the other way? Sometimes they peen them. Sometimes they peen one side of the pin over so it can only go one direction. That's not overkill. Oh, 
far enough. Hair more. We had it right the first time. I could see the crimp. I ran it the wrong direction. Bink. Yeah, it definitely got some like rubbery material that settled on the bottom. I don't think that was a gasket of any sorts. I think that's just crud. That sat there. Yeah. It's hard to say also, was it was that stuff already there when the fluid was put in it and put away 20 years ago, or did that happen because of it? Come on. There you go. Part of me thought about draining all the fluid out of it. Out of the uh Float bowl and just put gas in and see if it would start. So this is the main coming up. And if I can't see through that, if I can't blow through that, I'm gonna let you know in a second. I'm gonna hold it up to the light and see if there's any anything going through it. It is clogged. And the fact that it's clogged it didn't take too much to blow it out. It's open now. I don't think it would have started. I think it would have starved for fuel. And you know, if I don't clean it, we'll have issues. I don't know if we can get the whole emulsion, emulsion tube out of it. Let's go see if we can feel like we lock on to anything. Yeah. It's like a whole nother level that can come out. I'm gonna get a fatter screwdriver that fits that a little bit better. Does it look like I've used <laughs> that one before? Ground the sides down so we get down in there. Yeah, you know, brass and aluminum generally isn't too bad, but when you introduce gas and then the gas goes bad. I don't think she's gonna go. Yeah, what happens is it's brass, you know, it looks like that, just larger. And the edges start to break away. And that's that sound that you're hearing. So we're not gonna get that out of there. So we're gonna have to go move forward. Give that a quick rinse. Gotta melt some of that crap off the top there. I don't know if those are little, probably just like little plugged off ports. Yeah, they're all full of crap too. Look at the mud that's coming out of them. I'm not sure if they would have drawn anything up. I think the fuel just goes in through here, through that uh, main jet and then up the emulsion tube. But both of these guys, full of mud. And I think we might just throw it in the ultrasonic cleaner. Cause if we don't, you'll know I'll have to. Kind of like security, right? Just do it for the sake of doing it or Murphy's Law will get us if we can get that seal out of there. Because the seal will expand. If I don't, it'll get all blown out. There we go. Get that out. Let's get the air fuel mix screw out of it. And it looks like we have an idle one that's coming down from the top. Let's get that out. And then this one right here. It's all full of uh, marble too. What happens too, sometimes the oil is thick, although it saved everything. You go to put fuel in it, the it just literally can't drag it up. It's so thick, it doesn't want to get moved. Let's see what we got going on here. Uh, I think we are in. <laughs> yeah, it's got mud sitting in the bottom of it, so. We definitely need to come apart anyway. But the bowl's not all corroded. That's a good sign. Usually a lot of times you take these apart, there's nothing but like white powder and junk all over everything. So, I mean, it did need to be done. I 
Now, if you did it for say like three years, maybe possibly you could have just pulled the the bowl screw and have the drain out and have fuel go in it, but it wasn't gonna run this way. All right, let's go soak all those parts, get them doing, and we'll jump onto something else. Yeah, look at the layer that's on there. Let's go throw that pump in the vise. Let's take a quick look at that. I know it already pissed most of the fluid out of it. Let's see if that took on any, any damage. Is that gonna stay? Let's go see if the center, like it had a lot of drag when I went to go turn it over. Should be that. Doesn't feel terrible. It's got like a little pistons that move up and down. I think three of them. Man, I wonder if the, he put oil inside those. That would be right here, those three pistons. Hold on. I laid it down like it was in the machine and I thought it was out of oil. What it was is, you tilt it up, see the bubble? It's actually over full of oil. I think normal is you go kind of like halfway across, but it was sitting like that. And it filled the whole thing up so you couldn't see anything. So it's still got oil in it. I wonder if it maybe you pushed some out because it was over full. I need to leave that alone now. That's loose. Go pop one of the uh, pistons out of it. Just see what it looks like. I'm gonna go to the end one. We'll see if you put any oil or anything inside one of those. It's gonna have, you need a little pick. It may not even come out. It might be keyed. There's, no, there's another one going this direction. get one more out of it. I'm in the mood to take stuff apart. We're not, right? It's kind of boring. We just sit there and start it up. Might as well take it apart. Not going to allow to get in there. Launch me across the room. <laughs> Spring pressure. There you go. More of the same. And I would think there could be like little valves. They open and close, but I do believe there's pistons behind them too. I was hoping to get one of them out of it. Now damaging them, you know. Fortunately, it might be on the other side. Might be where it's bolted into the pump itself. These are going to be the valves and we got more internally here. I think this is just a gearbox for the most part. This part of it, everything's contained here in this brass head. I'm going to look at that real close real, and we'll see if we have a way to get those out of there. If not, I may not dig any further. We'll see. Give that a little wiggle. Just don't want to break anything, you know. Or there's something on the other side holding them. Just gonna be like little one-way doors is all they are, little valves. But there's three sets of them, each doing the kind of same thing. I, I think they are, what's 360 divided by three? 220? 120? 120. 120 degrees apart from each other. I think if you would have a three-cylinder engine, each one makes its own pulse. But then it spins so fast you can't even notice it. Yeah. I don't know. You want to go further? You afraid we're going to damage it or not? Let's uh, let's go for it. Those screws are not metric. Let's 
A little more persuasion. <clears throat> Holy moly. Tough on the fingers. It's always one, right? Now there's the pistons. It, and that's what like if you go to run it dry, these are what you're going to burn up, and they should dance up and down as we turn it. There you go. A little three-cylinder engine. I wonder what we could put on them for lube on the startup. Try to get it where they're all even. rings are down. Let's take a look at the bores. Let me get this out of the way. Let's go flip this where the, the breather is facing upward. There's a little oil drops that are coming out of it. Yeah, so the bores are pretty corroded. I'm sure they probably would have polished themselves up, but let's see. What talking about? Yeah. That was the drag. That's all the drag right there. Is that anyway to call it the grows on brass what that corrosion would be so that's where the seals would get eaten up you try to spin it on them it probably would have polished itself up that's pretty bad right there huh that center one i wonder if we should take like a brake hone and just kind of lightly give her a little shot of like oil and just polish that surface up a little bit i don't think it'll hurt i think that's going to do more damage just trying to let it run like that than anything so the little brake cones, these are for like doing wheel cylinders on your car or a master cylinder. It has an adjustment on it. Like right now, there's there's no preload that that won't even do anything. You know, just kind of flop in the hole. But more you crank down on the spring tension, the more it wants to put pressure on the outside walls. So we're just going to set it up where it's like really light, just so we're just trying to break off that outer the outer crust. Something like that. Let's go get a drill hooked up, throw some oil on it. Just give it a little up and down each wall there, you know. This is just motor oil. There stands a chance, you know, motor oil might kind of destroy the seals a little bit, but it's going to have water rinse to it. Hopefully very shortly. And it's not going to be much of an issue. Do anything? Let's give it a little bit more. See what the sides of it looks like. Where's that little light? Yeah, I don't think it's gonna take much to get it cleaned up. And there's still some more crap on it though. You can see it on that side wall there. Yeah. So I'm gonna work on them a little bit till I get rid of that. I just don't want to dig up into the brass too much. But I do want to get rid of that that white corrosion that's growing on it right there. What's the rest of it? It just seems like maybe that one seems to be the worst one. As a little three cylinder engine looks now. It's pretty good. I don't think we took off any real brass. Uh, definitely improvement from what it was. I think that would have probably chewed up the seals on us. Quick look over here is make sure we get nothing going on. 
So the back seal, these are the one, like this sits in that groove down below, which is kind of sitting on the face of it right now. The actual pump seal is this one right here. They're a little on the, on the stiff side. They're stiff and soft, right? Your own jokes. They probably sell a rebuild kit for this, but we're gonna go ahead and move on with what we got. Yeah, not gonna be able to do anything. Sometimes they, they make a ceramic ones too, I think, on some of the newer ones. Or oh, the boar ceramic. You can see a little bit of rust is kind of sitting in there from water. You probably have these three screws you take out, you could probably change them right out, complete. But we're gonna leave them alone. I don't know, we should probably coat it with something. Uh, let me go see what I got. Just so happens the guy that gave us these machines also gave us some silicone oil. I figure, again, all most of this is going to get washed off as soon as it runs. 30 seconds of the, you know, this thing screaming away. I just want to make sure that when it first fires, it doesn't burn itself out. That's the problem with pressure washers too is you're supposed to have a, a supply of water going to them anytime kind of like a boat motor or else it'll take out the rubber seals and if we tried starting that up the way it was that it would have cooked it right away all that crap that was on there all that green green and white corrosion all right so we go put those back together all right i give was it like that or like that <laughs> I think, I think it was like that, right? Yeah, might as well throw some in the bores too, right? Ounce of prevention. Watch this stuff like melts away the, uh, the rubber seals. <laughs> yeah, let's get that back on there. Hopefully it doesn't fight us too much. Yeah, man. It is. Can we, will they pop out of there? I don't think so, right? Yeah. I think the seals are so hard, they're kind of... Good thing I put lube on there, huh? Just jamming in the hole with no lube. She ain't gonna go. Just bright idea was it to take it apart? <laughs> Come on. It's like trying to start rings on a piston, you know? Man. I wonder if these lift off. pieces I wonder if we can start them that can be a good idea or not let's go see what they do definitely don't want to go past that is that all they go maybe they just that's all they go is it just that far so this is not what's going up now. This is just the seal. Then we go in so far, and then the piston goes the rest of the way. So, what gives? What gives? <laughs> Let's go take a caliper real quick. It just seems weird. Maybe this is the only piece that changes the volume. Let's go crank that real quick. Try to understand what's going on. So there's like, will this go up and will this go down? Yeah, there you go. So what's happening is, so all this stuff stays in place. Now it makes sense. And it just changes the volume by the, the, the piece of Teflon in the middle. So the seals are not moving up and down. They're just staying put. So 
It might actually been okay. Let's go get it. We're, can we get all three of them the same height? Will that work? No. So all those are going to sit against that ridge. And that's it, right? It's just going to push all these right down. So what's stopping it from going back together? What am I missing? It just falls together. <laughs> gonna beat it with a hammer. What is it running into that stops it from going? So let's go, if that's how it works, let's just go take all those seals and we'll start them in their bores, right? Just drop each one down. We'll get them already started. Probably leave them on there. They won't fall off. Yeah, we'll get all those cups in place. Because I think that's where it's fighting. I think it's trying to get those lips to feed in. And if we don't, if we force it, we're going to end up taking out the edge of one of those. Think that'll work? Let's try that. Okay. Ah, there you go. We got the magic touch now. Let's go throw those screws in there, buzz it back together. the output where the wand goes on. Check ball is kind of same as that pneumatic for your air compressor tools. Kind of same idea. Little love. So I was thinking this was an angle drive running up in here and then the, the pump guts were up inside here, but it's not. Right here is a crankshaft going across and it's, you know, just like on a car, it's gonna have journals that are offset from each other. They have little connecting rods going to those pistons. Each one kind of moves up and down. And then on here is a check valve. Each one of these is a check valve for its own cylinder. Water is allowed to come in through here. This is the, what is the in? I'm gonna say this is the in. This is probably garden hose in right here. Feeds water in on these sides. These valves, when the piston goes down, we'll pick the end one. The piston goes down. The valve allows that chamber to fill up with water. Then when the piston goes back up, that valve shuts off. This valve opens up and allows water to exit out and uh, create pressure. But all three of those are kind of working together. So that's the setup on it. The clearances are not critical. Those were not rubbing against the sides of the uh, walls there. It, it, I think it would have been fine, but I'm glad we took it apart anyway. Got to see what was inside. Yeah, let's see how our carb cooking is going. The crap is off the top of that. Excuse me. How about the float ball? Yeah, the float looks pretty good too. All right, we'll go shut that down and bring them over. Shut up. There you go. Let's put the parts back in the bowl. One thing I just want to make sure of. First of all, I'm looking at the float. I want to see that it's kind of level going across in the upside down position and then it drops down. I'm going to blow into it, make sure air can go through. Then I'm going to flip it over. Make sure I can't blow any air through it. That's just making sure that the needle and seat are doing what they should be doing. So we should be good to put everything back together. And we can put the carb back on the machine. And then probably get into me. We'll fire it up without the pump on it and try to get the engine working correctly. And then we'll throw the pump on with water. It's got a valve on it. Uh, see if that, oh, I would think it would be full of oil, you know, or something. We should probably rinse through that. Maybe put some gas in it. Uh, you know what else we want to do too? Let's go take an air gun or something or vacuum. We'll, we'll d blow out whatever that crap that was that we saw in the tank. 
Let's see if we can get some of the crap out of there while it's, you know, just dry dust. I don't know if that did anything. So I actually got some sludge on the bottom. Let's go throw a white rag on it and hit it with some. Soak it with some brake clean so you could break it up. Get in my belly. See if you can kind of scrub it around. There's like two different levels to it. There's like a lower level here. The upper part looks okay. This is just where all the gas was sitting. Or oil. Both. Keep doing that till we get a clear bottom. Yeah, about 80% of the way there already. I think that's got it pretty good. What we'll do is we'll put some gas in it and we'll open the valve and let it kind of just rinse through. It'll probably rinse out the fuel line and the petcock. And we'll see if the petcock even works. It's an odd word, isn't it? Let's not get crazy here. A good dollar fifties worth. So, <laughs> shot off. Yeah, don't work. <laughs> Let's see if we can prop this up some kind of location. Hold on a second. Need two hands. Yeah. So all the way out. But you think it'd have a little bit greater flow than that. Is all the way out off? I don't think so. No. Run it in. Does not make a difference. There it goes. Wait, 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 did we get it? Might have just had some crap in the valve. I think they do have a rubber tip on the end of them. Let me see if we can get a little bit more aggressive with turning it off. Not some pliers. And she's not going to stop. Oh well. You know when we fix that? Shh. Yeah, but right on the, the carburetor. I'll throw a clamp on there. You rinsed out a little bit of dirt too. So that's kind of what I was worried about. Just pushing that into the carburetor because there's no fuel filter on this thing. Alright, let's see what we get. Chokes on. We got the throttle. That is idle. That's somewhere in the middle. Let's go for that. Towards the night, I would get just that air fuel mix a little. I want to run it into a stud. I want to run it into a stud running rough. about a half a turn.
it's uh, hunting a little bit, but that may go away. It, and hunting is could be either a governor setup or it's just running a little on the lean side, but it does not have the air cleaner on it, and that will kind of make it run a little bit richer. So I say we go and put the pump back on it, the air cleaner back on it, shove some water on it, and plus it'll give it drag too. Sometimes the drag helps get rid of some of that bounce, but we'll see. It also can go, like, once you run it for about five minutes, it may go away just from warming up. If not, it's a little on the lean side. That's weird. Check that out. Can you see the smoke coming out of it? Don't know if that carb is flooding over. You see the mist. Yeah. You don't see they're stuck. It's dripping. Hate when that happens. I'm gonna go pinch off the line. I'm gonna go drop the bowl again. And either a little piece of debris went down there and got stuck between the needle and the seat, or there's an issue. <laughs> One thing I did forget to do was see if the float floated. Generally, that style, it's kind of like a closed cell foam almost. It's, I don't believe those are hollow. I generally don't have an issue. There's some crap. There's some crap in the bottom of the bowl though. So I have a feeling it's just some dirt cut in between the needle and the seat. Just quickly turn the gas on them to get the, give her a couple of shots and just hold that up and see if it shuts off. It's taking some decent pressure for it to shut off. It, nothing saying that the uh, end of that, the, the nipple on the uh, needle isn't bad neither. I looked at it, I didn't see anything. I'll clean itself out a little. All right, I'm gonna go throw the bowl on it real quick and uh, I'll release it and I'll see if it overflows again. If it went away, I'm just gonna leave it. If not, we have to take that apart and take a look at that the seat of that needle. I know a lot of people are gonna say, why don't you put a filter in the line? Gra I don't have good luck with gravity feed and filters. A lot of times you will get restriction and the filter will just kind of like airlock and not allow fuel to go through. Where if it has a fuel pump, it's enough to keep it going, but let's go give that a second and see what it does. Good thing I didn't put five gallons in it, huh? Been a minute or two, I don't see anything. It does again, we'll tear into it more, but for now, I think we might be okay. So I eyeballed it pretty good, I didn't see anything. I looked at the needle when it was out, I didn't see any scratches or anything on it, not that. Sometimes the needle will get like deformed, it'll get like a, a, a taper or ridge on it and it also can go like where it leans to one side <laughs> stop it it'll have like um the crown of it will rock a little bit to one side of it and then when it's trying to seal it it can't seal around this side of it because it's it's already touching on this side so it makes kind of like an an uh i don't know how you want to say it egged out contact patch Probably taking this apart so many times. Every time I gotta bend those tabs up to stop them from rotating, eventually they're gonna get weak and break off. I'm gonna run it one more time, just make sure we're good. And you think we even need choke? I never even hooked it up. Let's do it without choke, see if it fires up and... Somewhere in there.
<laughs> Hopefully it doesn't flood over. Then we can move on. Yeah, I think it just got some dirt up inside there. All right, I'm gonna pull that hose through with the vent and we'll pop the air cleaner on it. Just when you think it's safe, let's eat it again. All right, I'm going back in. You can see, even in the float bowl, after it was all cleaned out, all the sludge that's showing up again. All you need is a little bit of that to get between the needle and the seat. So that's the tip of the needle right there, a little neoprene nipple. And that seats against a hole inside there. And either one of those can have a little bit of contamination, a little bit of dirt that gets put on them. So I'm going to go and clean those up. I'm also going to go throw the float in the cleaner and make sure it floats because that would do the same thing. So it does your float. Float. Oh, looks okay. The weight of the needle is still on it, so it wants to flip it over that other direction. But if that thing went so you could barely even see it, if it was hanging out like something like that where it's just on the verge or it sinks, then you know it's screwed. Yeah, I didn't expect this style to do that. Yeah, I think on the inside it's kind of like a closed cell foam. foam. So even if it got a little hole in it, it would just fill a little tiny chamber of it, not like fill the whole thing up like a hollow one, like the old brass ones used to be. I've used like valve lapping powder in the past. I'm just going to go, we're going in dry with a Q-tip. I'm just going to kind of clean and polish that surface that it sits on. Uh, I guess you could use like toothpaste or something too if you wanted to. to Make sure that surface that it touches all around is polished. If anything, I'm going to go say it's the needle. I look closely at the needle. You can see there's a ridge going all the way around it. So, okay. this is what it is. We'll try it one more time. That's why it's good to have the fuel shut off that works. You know, you can shut the thing off when you're not using it. Because what would happen is you put that thing in your garage, and you're done using it, and you put it in your garage, and you come back, your whole house, or you know, at least your garage is filled up with gas smell. It could be very dangerous. So. So, right, if you have the capacity to shut it off, and it's leaking, but if you don't have either one, you gotta wait till the tank goes empty. <laughs> Five bucks a gallon. Don't want that. So, I kept working the valve. You got the fuel to shut off there, but. <laughs> now it's leaking at the pad. All right, I'm gonna go unbolt that. We're gonna probably tilt it forward so the gas goes to the front of the tank and uh, see if we can undo that and see what's going on inside. Generally there's like packing that goes around it on like this this gland nut that I'm taking off and you can kind of tighten down on that and it'll crush that packing around the shaft. left of it is gone so there'd be a seal right in here that this part of it so you get to come down well, that part right there has a seal on it so as you crush this into there there's a taper on it it closes in around on the hole and stops it from leaking up this end of it you can't get that off if you were to you know, it's kind of like a rivet on the end you take the grind the rivet off you take the end off you take the seal off and we change it. I'm gonna go chase what I have real quick. If not, I think I'm gonna blow that out. We'll just try packing it the best we can, but I have a feeling all that went to brittle on the inside from sitting. Let's look underneath the magnifying glass if we can spin it. This point right here is bent, so it must have taken a hit at one time, and the, the post is kicked on an angle. Normally, this would seal. Kind of like the carburetor, but just brass on brass. And it can't because it's not sitting in the center. It kind of waddles. You, know, so you can see where it like started trying to make threads. 
on it. Uh, look real quick, see if I have anything in my stash that's like this. And this is one that threads in the tank, right? Yeah. So it would have to be one that has that style of sealing off the tank, not just an inline one. Should feel. Yeah, it's got a lot of slop on it. Oh, that light's getting you. Sorry. You could tell the, the packing's not even doing anything. Usually, you squeeze, squeeze down the gland nut. Like I said, the, the rubber seal will kind of just crush a little bit more. Sometimes, though, if you back it all the way out, it'll have like it'll seal on its face. And you run it all the way in, it'll seal. I don't think it's gonna work on this one though. See if it still pisses gas out of the fuel line. Well, there's your answer. At least it doesn't leak out the other end, right? <laughs> I know, you want me to steal one off the other machine. Let's see if we can get an O-ring metal. Too small. That might do it. I'm just gonna run that one down, and we'll see if we can. Like I said, the, the taper will pack in on as long as we can get that down in there. That might not even might not even fly for us. There it goes. All right, we'll see if that'll work. Let's see. Third time the charm. Cracker open. Make sure we get gas still flown. We did. Make sure it still shuts off. I think on the shut off part, we gotta give her. No, it's got it. So you can always give her a little bit of. Eh. And then I ran that gland nut in. If you run it in too far, you won't even be able to turn the knob back and forth because it, it just crushes down so much on it. So that one seems to be okay. Licked. All right, see if we can the carburetor will uh, play this time. no more. If it does, we're going to work with the valve. Let's move forward. It took a minute before. It didn't happen right away. It actually took like about a minute, literally 60 seconds, and then it started doing it. So I'll let that sit. I'll bring it back if it's screwy. I'll bring it back either way. I think we got it this time, but I don't trust it, you know, it can still act up on a later date. So keep an eye on it. At least the fuel shut off is good so I can shut it down when I'm not using it. Another good thing about these little couplers that go on here, other than kind of like making a link between the two of them, if there's a slight uh, mismatch, this can take it up a little bit. It's allowed to slide and kind of kick a little bit. The other half is ex essentially the exact same thing. Both of these are the same. Got a little dampener in between them. And it has a little bit of uh, room for cushion. Plus, they, they just don't hammer on each other, too. It keeps the two sections of metal from beating each other up. So I started getting ready to put the pump on and wiping all the crap off of it. I'm like, well, the oil came from because the thing's full. Well, I had oil, and then it made sense that that's what failed was the valve. It was leaking out of the tank through the, side, the back side of it, dripping down, but it was the Marvel Mystery Oil until that ran down, so there was nothing in the tank, but the carburetor was still full. That explains it. Rather deal with that than having that leak, that's for sure. Trying to get that the seat on there. So. Spin the engine a little to get it to. It should be right about there. Yeah.
Yeah. Can't stick my fingers in there to turn it. You'll fight with me, will you? I will win. You just don't know it yet. Look at the tip on this thing. Yeah, yeah. It's got like both of them on the same double header. But how would you how would you switch from one to another? Do you, that doesn't slide, does it? No. It's all one piece. So how do you switch from one to the other? Yeah. Hmm. Because we're gonna find out when you put water to it. You think it like you would like click it one direction or the other? And no, I'm not gonna look at the manual. Maybe <laughs> it just does both. I don't know. Well, it's the next day, set overnight, and it is still not playing well as far as the needle seat is concerned. It started did start dripping real slow, and of course the fuel valve. <laughs> it's probably more of the same, not shutting off completely. So it does need a needle and seat, and then you know if I can get a rebuild kit for the uh, or just another uh, shut off valve, we should be good. One thing I forgot to mention, there is a relief valve on the pump. So when you let off the trigger, the water no longer has any place to go, but the pump is still trying to make 2000 PSI and push it out the end of the gun. And that pressure would just keep on coming up. So it has a relief valve that fires off. And what it does, it dumps the pressure from going out of the wand back around to itself and kind of feeds itself in a circle. And it kind of uses the hose as a reservoir. So say you got 50 PSI coming in, it goes up to 2000. It may bring the water pressure up to about 60 PSI in that section of the hose and just kind of use that, like I said, like a buffer for it to uh, not overstrain the pump and just, you know, stall the engine out. I'm gonna flush out for a second. Maybe dirt or debris that's either in the hose. I don't want to clog the tip. You can see that's what we got for water pressure here. Not that great. So a bigger machine, it's just not enough volume to keep up with it. If your machine say is putting out three gallons a minute and you only have two gallons supply, something's got to give, right? Yeah, it's an odd setup. I don't get it. You would think you got to be able to turn one of those on and off. I don't know how you would do that. I always look at the manual, but that's cheating. Weird. Go fire it up, see what it does. One tip when it's not having power, and the other one you let off. Yeah, you got me. I don't know if that's just clogged or. Can it wash itself? Pressure's definitely down. What it should 
big. Not terrible, but much better than that. I think we gotta figure out what's going on with that tip situation up there. All right, I broke down and looked at the manual. You won't believe how that is supposed to work. <laughs> You're supposed to turn it one way, hit the trigger, low pressure. You flip it over the other way, hit the trigger, it's high pressure. There must be like a little, little door inside here that flaps one way or the other and then you hold it down to get that pressure. Kind of weird, huh? Never seen anything like that before. Give it a shot, see what it does. See, he does it at low pressure. Yeah. <laughs> That's just weird, huh? Go fire it up. Well guys, I think we're getting the end of the program about here. The only thing I see is the needle and seat that needs to be addressed. It should probably get a new one. No fault of anything that could have been done to save it as far as, you know, we had gas in it, you had stable, you had oil in it, dry. I think that tip still would have done the same thing. It's just over time, the rubber just got, gets too hard and brittle on it and it doesn't make a soft seal against the, the uh, seat. And that's your outcome. <laughs> uh, pressure's not great. In the building so i don't think that is any issue with the machine i think we just stopped feeding it enough the little one over there works fine off of the amount that comes to it but it also uses probably about the third of the water that this uses so i think it'll be fine i'm gonna run it over to the house it's gonna do some pressure washing on the building and i'll put in the notes if it does have any issues or we'll make another video about the pump being crap <laughs> we'll tear it apart as far as this one's concerned guys we're gonna go wrap it up i thank you all for hanging out with me and uh, we'll get into something next week till then later Maybe and kick the essence, straighten it out and